Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. No blessing, folks. This is Dale. Thank you again for joining with me on the Word Podcast. We're continuing going through Jesus' Olivet Discourse, as it is often called. It's where Jesus is answering some questions that the disciples had asked him, and they're on the Mount of Olives. So he's talking to them. This course means he's talking. And so he's talking to them about the sign of his coming again and of the end of the age. And uh, as we've seen episode after episode after episode, tremendous detail about this. We're drawing in close to the end of it, as a matter of fact, right now. Jesus is explaining some things. He had told them what was going to happen. He would given examples of what it was going to be like. It's going to be like in the days of... Uh, uh, Noah, for instance, is going to be uh, like the ten virgins that he gave a parable about. Now, in Matthew twenty-five thirty-one, he says this, But when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. So here we see the Son of Man, Jesus himself, sitting on his glorious throne. And it's after he's come in his glory with all of his angels. So this puts this at the end of the 70th week of Daniel, when uh, things are drawing to the end for this particular corporeal existence. Then he says this in verse 32. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them from one another. As the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, he will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. So he's using a, a parable-like idea, a metaphor, a picture. Right? He's not really a parable, but he's saying, uh, I will divide the nations. The sheep will be on the right, the goats on the left. Well, that what does that mean? Just knowing that, we're not quite sure. Well, he starts to explain. Verse 34. Then the king will say to those, to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And we looked at this in the last episode, that this kingdom had been prepared for them. It was one that they were to inherit. And it was a kingdom that had been planned and fashioned and formed and determined before the foundations of the world. Before the foundation of the world, when the Lord Jesus Christ spoke anything into existence, he knew about this. And then he tells him what happens. And why? He says, For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous, now look at that. They are described as the righteous. We saw them at the beginning, sheep and goats, sheep on the right. Okay, He just says, okay, the ones that are on the right will inherit the kingdom. That's the sheep. But now he's calling them the righteous will answer him. And here's what they're going to say. Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? And when did we see you a stranger and invite you in or naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? The king will answer them and say to them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did it to one of these brothers of mine, even the least of them, you did it to me. These folks are going to be absolutely dumbfounded. They will see things that we, we see it in the scripture. They're going to experience the day of the Lord's wrath. They're going to experience the wrath of God. Quite often people think, well, everybody's going to be annihilated in the wrath of God. No, that's not true. There will be some people that make it all the way through, some Jewish people that make it through, some of the nations, and these are the nations right here. And the Lord is judging them, the sheep on the right, the goats on the left. The sheep are called righteous. Why are they righteous? Because of what they had done. No. Okay? Quite often people say, well, that sounds like salvation by works, that you've earned it. He said... What did he say earlier? He said that this had been determined, this kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. The Lord knew them. The Lord called them. The Lord elected them. The Lord predestined them. All these terms that you see in Scripture. He was the one who determined and knew that they would be saved. They did what they felt like they were supposed to do. For the most part, because of just the shock you see in the way they respond, they had no idea. They were simply helping people. We have seen this uh, in, in the last hundred years. We saw people that helped the Jewish people in the Second World War. People who were not Christians. People who were not uh, Jews helped the Jewish people. Now, watch what happens. We'll close out the chapter. 
verse 41. Then he will also say to those on the left, depart from me, accursed ones, into the eternal fire, which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. So the ones on the right, he calls righteous. The ones on the left, he calls accursed. And he says, you're going to the eternal fire, to the lake of fire. You're going to the place prepared for the devil and his angels. And we learn some things about what's going to happen in the end times, that the eternal fire has been prepared. It's prepared for the devil and his angels. And some wild things that we really can't understand, this was known of God before the foundations of the earth. Before he spoke anything into existence, he knew exactly what the outcome was going to be of everything. Of course, we come along in our limited, finite minds in this linear time frame, and we say, well, why didn't God do this? Why didn't he do this? Why didn't he do that? No, 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 no. You can't say that. You sit here and look at the truth, and you just bow the knee in honor and worship of the Lord. So he says, you depart from me, you accursed ones, for I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Now, let me just hasten to say here a little parenthetical thought. Yes, these are things that we're supposed to be doing, okay? And you will usually hear these passages preached right here from the point of view of reaching out and helping people in need. Absolutely. We are to do that without doubt, okay? But the context of this is showing the end time, showing what is happening in these last days, and showing that after the church is raptured, After the day of the Lord and all this stuff happens, there are going to be people that have been determined to be righteous because of what they did for the brethren, for the Jewish people, and for the church. There will be people who will be determined to be accursed because they did not do anything. It sort of carries the idea for me that they had opportunity to do it, and yet they did not do it. So verse 44, Matthew 25 says this, Then they themselves also will answer, Lord, When did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. These will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. And that, that's some profound insights to some things. It also brings some uh, understanding and some insight into some things, that uh, a lot of things that were said in my life as I was growing up, uh, a lot of things that were communicated that were incorrect about salvation. Okay, And sometimes it might have been said forthrightly. More often than not, it was just sort of inferred. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, in, in the back of my mind, and really in the forefront of my mind, it was always said that after the church is raptured, no one else will be saved. You, gotta, you have to be saved before that. You have to, and we're actually trying to scare people out of hell rather than inviting them into the kingdom and letting the power of the Spirit move. And when you see passages like this, all of a sudden you realize, wait a minute, that's not exactly right. There's not exact, that's not exactly right. There will be people who are non-Jews. Now, there's a remnant of the Jews that will be saved also. Romans tells us that when they look upon him whom they crucified, they will believe. But there will be some Gentiles of the nations who will be saved. Why? Simply for the same reason that you and I are, if you're a true believer. God chose to. God desired to before the foundations of the earth. I tell you what, take these truths. Read over these passages. Meditate upon them. Seek the Lord. He'll give you even more understanding. I'm Dale, and I thank you for being with me. I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.